Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to another live stream here on Facebook if you're watching this live or maybe you're watching this on YouTube at which point uh, it will have become a Needlefeld tutorial free to you brought to us, The Makers. And uh, today you're here um, initially to watch how to make this little round bunny with a little bit of help um, and the help is um, through a wool ball that's inside, that's there. and. Um, um, I, t I talk a little bit more about this, but if you stay tuned, then um, you should be able to um, see straight away how to make this super cute, uh, stay, stay, super cute little um, sheep, which again has a very um, similar um, technique, but we're adding a little bit more. So um, I'm just going to have a quick look who is here today live on our Facebook uh, page. And then I will talk um, a little bit more what what's expected. So we've got here today um, Alicia, who's obviously um, the a voice in my ear and will feed things back to me. We've also got here um, Carol as Flora Fauna Feld. Hello, Carol, and also Colette. Um, Fiona is here. Hello, everybody. Um, Alex is there. Hello, Sherry is there. Heather, Rosemary. Diane, hi Diane, um, and we've got also got Laura there. Hello, Laura. I hope you're all right. I heard you had a bit of an accident, so I hope you're all good. Um, Liz, Liza is there. Liza, sorry, um, this is all jumping around. So many people joining us. Um, Ellie is there. Hi, Ellie. Ellie, Maureen, Gina, um, Elaine, Alison, um, and uh, Jane is there. Um, Sandra, Katie, lots of you are there. They're all saying hello at the moment. Elizabeth, I think I might have jumped a few. Pauline, and um, so yeah, it's really lovely to see everybody there. Um, so the little round bunny comes as a small kit. I haven't got the box with me. My excuse, my 100% excuse is that I have actually been away um, more or less continuously for two weeks. I've, I've got I've got some flowers and a butterfly up there, but didn't realize I put them exactly where my head is. So you can see bits extending from my head um, and I have to move my head for you to see them. So the, the little round bunny comes as a kit, but I have got it um, very efficiently pre-packed by my lovely colleagues in a, a Ziploc bag. And um, But I will show you what's inside the kit that you um, would be getting. Um, so they never pack me any tools because I don't need them, I've got plenty. But they do pack me a set of instructions, which is always very helpful um, when I need to look up what I'm actually talking about. So the bunny instructions, our instructions as always, they have a tape measure on the left hand side to tell you exactly what you need um, and also what's inside um, the kit. And, um, and the, this one is a very easy beginner level. So if you um, want something where you have an ax absolute guarantee it's going to success, this is the one for you. Let's see what's inside. Um, there is actually very little uh, materials inside because you don't need very much because, and now this is the secret ingredient, you are getting, yes, what, wait for it, this is a wool ball. Did you think it was a polystyrene ball? Shame on you. We would never use them, never ever in a million years time. And this is to make this little chap. I think I've actually um, completely terrified people in the past because I, I'm so vehemently against the uh, polystyrene ball idea, <clears throat> especially as our kits come with an eco wool mat, which you get in your kit too. And then you get three felting needles in your kit as well. So you don't need, um, a polystyrene ball you can make the core yourself but I'm going to show you if you want to skip that process that you can actually use a wool ball now we do sell these on our um, website as well they come in two different sizes this is a five centimeter diameter they also come in six centimeter diameter and um, um, they're ready there for you to use you have a bit of pink wool and a little bit of white wool and then of course our glue and eyes which um, we couldn't live without um, because we, I use them every day, every day. I've used them at least twice today already because I've been making the royal pooch and I'm going to put these in my very handy little caddy where there's all kinds of things in there already. There, I'm not going to lose them at all. This is a magnet, um, obviously very strong magnet, but it's very useful to use. 
So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to make a shape. Even though we've already got a shape, we've got to make the head shape ourselves. And uh, for this, you have um, your white wool. If you're following um, our kit, then you split the white wool in half, roughly in half. That looks about right. And uh, you take, um, and you put one to one side, which I have done, and the other one, you take the remaining and half and flatten it into a longer than wide strand of about six centimeters. So it needs to be six centimeters wide, but it can be as long as you like it to be. Longer always better, because we're going to wind this now into a sausage shape, but we don't just want to wind it like that. We also want to tuck the sides in as we go, because I'm trying to make a quite a squat sausage shape. So this needs to be all nice and really tightly wound up. Get these last wispy ends always teased out right to the very end. Wind, wind, wind until you're at the very last wisps here. Now needle felting um, obviously involves a very sharp needle which looks a little like this and uh, the process is that you stab it into the wool in a straight line. So in and out in a straight line. Now from the side, the, um, if because I'm, you're looking overhead, that looks like this. So you go in and out in a straight line. It's always safer to rest your make on your wool mat. I have got an earth-friendly felting mat lying here with a felt sheet as a cover so that you can see the contrast of, my, of what I'm actually making. Now once you've rolled this into the shape, all you need to do is just stab it a little bit to firm it up. It's as simple as that. These these bunnies are so easy to make. Um, you should also have a look at our website for our bunny babies. They're not they're not baby bunnies. They're actually bunny babies that they are live now too. Um, as it's coming up for Easter, it might be a nice idea for a tree decoration, an Easter tree decoration. Um, so do do check them out. They're really super cute. Um, sadly, I haven't brought them with me to show you. But um, they're, they're literally little wrapped up babies with bunny ears. Um, so yeah, have a look at those on our website as a free tutorial and that uh, you can print that off as well if you want to. So I've been stabbing this um, a little bit now because uh, there is actually a template on here, I believe. There it is. So the head eventually will become that shape and the ball eventually will be slightly flattened so you do need to give that a good old squeeze because it needs to be quite flat um, so that the two can attach to each other so that the bunny um, also has a flat base and sits nice and comfortable. So this is the first step that I've made and now I'm going to attach the head to it. Now with anything to do with needle felting things don't always look exactly how you want them to look. In fact it, it takes quite a long time um, and they go through many many transitions so don't start getting nervy about it, just stick it. And um, once you've got a, a shape here and it doesn't even need to be as neat as what I have felted here um, because we're adding more wool over the top in a minute. But once you've got the two shapes, you've got the ready-made wool ball and then you've made um, that slightly long head you're going to start attaching it by stabbing into the edge of the head wool, so right in the edge here where it attaches the ball, and then you stab those fibers from the head ball into the body. And that um, is enough to just tuck the head onto the body. And that's what we want for now. We just want to make that head stay on so you don't have to hold onto it. So go all the way around the edge and just stab this wool straight from the head into the body. Now this wool ball is much much firmer felted, um, in fact it's wet felted, so when you stab into that you have to be definitely go in and out in a straight line because your needle will not like it if there's the slight cur slight, slightest curved motion on it. So don't do this, this is a curving motion, you don't want to do that, You what you do want to do is that. Imagine your hand is like the sewing machine needle going up and down, up and down, up and down. That's exactly how you want um, the, the direction of the needle to go. So once you've attached the little head here, um, then we're going to take a sheet, so taking this from the other half here, and um, I'm going to now wrap this, I'm just going to go back to the page where I need to be at, I'm going to um, 
split that half, other half that I've got here into half again and um, and 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 then I split it into three equal shape into three equal portions so I've got one two three roughly the same and these three equal portions now one of them will will be the cover to cover the head and the body and then I've got two for the ears so I'm going to put this to one side so I've still got half of that a half and then I've got my two portions that I've split from the half from the first half and I've got another bit here that's actually in three bits but it's meant to be just one now what I need to create is, is a sheet that fits over the head and over the body so we're, we're joining the head even more to the body by putting a sheet over it I've got three pieces here and um, the question is what do I do with them now to make them into one and the idea is that you find the largest piece which these are pretty much the same but I think that one is slightly larger and overlay the smaller one onto the larger one now you've made um, a thicker sheet but now you can actually tease it apart a little bit again um, to make it slightly bigger because it needs to fit from here all the way over the body around the front of the um, the little um, bunny so that you can smooth it out and it reaches down to the wool ball it's pretty much a, a, a perfect color match the wool that you're using and the wool ball so if, as long as you stab the wispy ends really neatly in and around the edges first so make sure it's um, it's sort of fairly taut but not so taut that you are pulling the head through just stab the wispy ends in first and get that sheet fastened on and then you're going to start following the shape of the bunny underneath because at the moment we've just made it into sort of a, a blob shape but we do want to get that head shape back out again so we're stabbing into that area where the head attaches but we still have to attach that sheet to the other parts of the bunny as well so around his, his chest um, so you're going up the body and you're finding that crease again where the head was attached by stabbing the wool in and working your way around. I haven't stabbed into the head yet, I'm going to do that next. So get it all fastened on. Now I think you can actually use your five needle felting tool for this. I'm going to try this. I'm pretty certain you can unlock it. So if you've not used one of these before, it's got five needles in there. A retracting shield which you need to unlock and then you can... Oh, it works really well actually. You can stab straight into that wool ball and get that um, wool felted down, that sheet felted down even better. So that is just a little tip to speed your work up. Now when it comes to the neckline you have to go back to your single needle and felt into the neck where you attached it earlier and then also felt down the sheet on the head. Because the head is a little bit softer, I'm not sure if it works, but it does, as long as you've got a bit of resistance. So lay the shape out onto your mat so you can step into it. Now you would be using, if you're following our kit, you would be using the little wool mat, you will have taken the label off, put these two on top of each other, and then use them as your felting mat like this. Once you get a little bit more into needle felting, I'm sure you would enjoy purchasing our earth friendly felting mud, which is so much, much easier to use. I've got a small sample here just to show you. So you've got a soft wool mud, it's also been used, um, which is made from 100% wool, and then a slightly firmer base, which is a which has got a 70% um, a wool content and 30% man made fiber. Now that you you literally cannot wear through these. They might get a little bit out of shape and you're able to add another um, soft or firm base or um, a top mat onto it. That we sell we do sell them separately, but invest into a set to start with because you need to use them on top of each other. Now I've got a little bunny here already. This didn't take very long at all because I've got that the help of this um of this wool ball, so I don't need to make that shape. Now wool balls wool balls versus polystyrene balls first of all you're not putting plastic into something that doesn't need plastic 
Secondly, you are actually um, able to stop this wool ball for as long and as much as you want to. Whereas with a polystyrene ball, they will start disintegrating. Um, so a lot of people come to us, and I'm just going to go to the big camera. A lot of people come to us and they say, oh, I can't do needle felting. My, my polystyrene ball disintegrates. The wool doesn't stick. Everything goes to... Um, Pots. So this is this. You don't need it. You have got um, the possibility to get a ready-made wool ball if you don't want to make your own shape. But you've seen how easy it is for me to make a shape um, by by um, by watching how I've done the head. So not a big problem. Right. Um, so let's um, let's see um, what else I can tell you. So we're very, very nearly um, at the end of the month, and that always means that the first of the month means a new subscription box is coming out. I'm looking very disheveled today. Sorry, got bits sticking out. I can never do the buttons up on shirts because I've got two long arms. Look, so I leave them open um, so that I don't feel like I've got to sit like this. Um, yes, the first of um, the, um, April is coming soon. And um, that means a new subscription box. Now, the new subscription boxes coming up um, are basically these. So you get to make two boar piglets. There's a little bit extra in the box as well because you can make um, a base, like a florist floor, forest floor, where they can uh, lie on and sit on. Uh, then you make an iris fairy for the uh, fairy box and our April, subscri our April um, surprise box is themed whatever the weather. Um, and um, of course that's brand new now that we do have um, a make along um, our Alicia Alicia has just asked they want to see the royal pooch I can show you the ro royal pooch I've got um, I've got two here I just need to um, get up and get it so I'm just going to talk to you about something else so remember next live streams coming up is therefore the box um, boxes are being revealed um, on it's quite late for us in the month, but it's the 4th of April, which is the next Tuesday on a um, the next Tuesday on a um, in of the month is the, is the 4th of April and then the week after is the Royal Pooch which I've just grabbed and um, Then the week after that we're going to do the Iris fairy together from our fairy box so um, that's what's coming up and what you need to put into your diary and somewhere in between there is also Easter. So the royal pooch, right. We all know that um, King's, King's Charles is actually a patron of the Battersea uh, Cats and Dogs Home. If you don't know it, you know it now. And um, they have um, they have got um, dogs, uh, Jack Russells. Their, their breed they love is Jack Russells. And so um, these the royal pooch is based on that. So uh, I've made two, they're slightly different because it's always hard to make exactly the same. But basically it comes with a little crown. The crown's still drying. I only did that earlier. But it is uh, it is on there now, so it's a little Jack Russell. And you can, of course, make the pattern in a different way if you want to model a particular Jack Russell. Um, that is um, That kit hopefully will be live next week so you can buy it in time for our um, for our uh, needle felting tutorial. So there we go. Royal pooch with flappy ears, happy ears, jumping around, flying through the air. I'm happy to be um, part of a, a very special event coming very very soon in May. You all know what I'm talking about, the coronation of course. So let's get back to um, the um, the little bunny. So on now our bunny needs ears, and for this I'm going to um, use. Um, remember, I've put some portions to one side, one, two, there, and uh, so from the second of the three portion of white, we'll take two small pinches, one for each ear. So I'm going to take there and there. That will do, two small pinches. And then I'm going to um, stretch this out a little bit. So I've got another bit coming off. It's always best to overlay these. Stretch, I'm just gonna put one to one side so it doesn't confuse us. Stretch one out. Now this is a typical way of making ears. You fold your um, wool portion in half and then all you're going to do is fold the side in towards the middle 
and then fold the other side in towards the middle. So you've got a, a kind of a triangular shape here with wispy ends. Now we need to felt down this first because this is not staying together otherwise. So I'm stabbing into this with my felting needle. There's a little bit of vegetable matter. I'm just going to poke this out because it will come out eventually anyway. So I'm just going to get that shape secured. But then I also need to lift it off my mat and turn it round and shape it from the other side. Now it's quite a stubby little ear, but there are certain tricks that you can do to shape this a little bit more. So first of all, you start flat into it. You can also shape into the sides. Just because the needle go, needs to go in and, in and out in a straight line doesn't mean to say it always has to come in at a right angle. What you do have to remember is to lift it off your mat. Now these wispy ends, they're going to stay unfelted, but what ca what you can do is, for starters, you can give that a little tuck and it makes it instantly longer. But secondly, you can actually felt it on to the mat and as you're felting, you're ever so slightly pulling at it. I'm pulling with my left hand and that also makes it longer as I'm felting. Lift it off, turn it round, felt the other side and do the same thing. So there is a lot of manipulation you can do with that ear, not just by felting into the right places, but also using your fingers to pull it and to stretch it and uh, manipulate the shape otherwise. One ear done there. And now the challenge is to make a second that looks just like the first one. That's always the thing. I'm going to put a little bit of pink inside the ear. I'm going to do that in a minute. So I'm going slightly off the beaten track here. A bit of VM in there again. VM stands for vegetable matter. Just going to pull some out. Right, and then fold this over. Felt it closed first. I'm not worried about the shaping just yet. I just want it to close up. I, I ran this uh, round bunny workshop um, at the recent show that I was at. And, um, did I? Mm -hmm. No, at the, at, the, at the one before. I just loved it. People were making floppy, um, floppy eared bunnies. Um, each bunny looked different. Some had really long ears, some had shorter ears. Uh, it was just absolutely delightful. I love it at the very end when um, it sort of comes together and then off hops a little bunny off the felting mat and they take it home. It's, it's really lovely. But this is a very, very simple project. If you want to get this and do it um, during the Easter holidays with your children, grandchildren, just supervise them. We recommend 10, um, 10 years and older, but to be perfectly honest, if you're sitting there with them um, and you watch that they can use the needle properly and uh, responsibly, I'm sure that you can um, allow them to do that at an earlier age. Right, two ears, and now I've got to attach them. Now, this is important. These wispy fibers, they need to be opened up all the way around the base. So they're, they're sticking out in all directions now. And I'm going to um, sit the ear on the side of the head. Now, you can have them facing that way. So they're up and then facing out, or you can have them facing forward. There's no right or wrong. It, um, the ears are quite mobile on the bunny, depending what, where, what, where they're listening out to. So get the ear felted on by spreading the wispy fibers at the end over the head, and then um, that secures it against the head. Here we go. So at the moment, um, what will happen is that you've got quite a flat ear attached. So it's quite wide here at the base and quite flat. So to manipulate the shape, I'm just going to felt it on a little bit more, you're going to stab into the back of the ear, and that will curve it slightly forward. So you've got a part of it now facing forward, can you see? And then um, you stab into the other um, side behind the ear too, to curve the other part slightly forward. And then you're going to stab into the imaginary ear hole to, um, to complete the shape. Now I haven't uh, put any pink in there, but it's never too late to add that level of detail um, by just grabbing a little bit tiny, tiny amounts, because once you start felting it down, it becomes a lot more concentrated. And just felt it on once the ear is attached. So you can do this either before or once it's on the bunny. There. Bit of pink showing. So this one, this little bunny has got the ears facing um, out. This little bunny has got them facing forward. And then I'm going to do that with the second ear. Now I've got quite a lot of wispy ends, so I'm taking some off and spread the remaining out, attach it again just by stabbing the 
wispy ends into the head just all around it that, that really helps to just get your fingers out of the way because the wool ear will just stay on there without you having to hold it let's get that fastened on if you're working quite close to the ear um, you can even manipulate the size a little bit make it a bit smaller and then as before I'm going to step into the back of the ear from one end curving it forward and then from the other end curving it forward so that will have made the shape come forward a little bit and then I step into the imaginary ear hole and that completes the shaping of the ear and again I need to probably add a little bit of pink so it's the same on both sides lay that down felt it down a little bit just needs a little a little bit of pink in there not nothing too much there so this bunny has got the ears facing outward to the side okay just for change now we're going to make um, we're going to shape the head a little bit more in the next step and the way to do this um, is by by first of all attaching the nose let's do that first you uh, take a little bit of pink wool and then fold it um, so that you've got a neater edge at the top and that neater edge needs to sit it's the ridge of the nose on the top of the bunny's um, end of face felt that down and then you can sort of if you can make a triangular shape by stubbing the wool into sort of a triangular um, um, outline and from that, the base of the triangle you can form a little neat line by just stubbing a straight little line going down and then you're going to go to the side into a curved line facing up and that will give the bunny um, sort of a smiling mouth but also will shape the mouth area a little bit more so because that shape is actually quite soft compared to the main wool ball you can now give him a bit of a more distinct um, mouth here and um, and these are and give him the little cheeks and then also where the eyes are going to go if you step quite consistently into the area on the side of the head that will also shape the head whilst you are making an indentation for the eye socket it will shape his head too so get the eyes get the eye markings down literally just where the eyes are going to go and if you look from the top you can see it has made the, sh the head a little bit more shapely I need to just uh, adjust that ear a bit push them back a bit so they're not in the eye it's the great thing about needle felting you can always adjust things so the ears are a little bit back now there there is that's where the eyes are going to go in this area here and for this you will need your eyes tuck them away safely here we go one two if you have an awl use an awl you can buy these at our website they're actually quite handy if you don't then use your felting needle now you need to push the awl in make sure you don't get it into your hand wherever it comes out it's actually really easy to push that awl in um, we like these a little bit better than the ones that we've had before because they're not so thick so they're perfect for eyes put the eye in and then uh, once you're happy with the positioning of the eyes come on and you go there once you think that the eyes if they're in the right position look from the top look from the front then you can use um, a little dab of glue from your glue bottle, your glue stick, your stick it glue pen. Add a dab of glue behind the eye and then push the eye in and allow the eye to dry. So you're, you're, you're just allowing the glue pen to slip behind the eye. The eye is not coming out and then you just push it firmly in and that's it. This glue will dry clear. Um, eventually as it's slowly drying clear on 
the top of the crown here so that's now yeah it's actually quite firmly on there um so that's the little bunny um, more or less done you can add a little eye marking onto him just to set off the um, eye um, by felting into into the out outer line of the eye you saw me twist the wool and then go all the way round you can make create sort of a little eyelid there could be slightly overlapping the eye as well this is optional if you don't like that then don't do it looks like it's got a bit of a pink eye but I think it's it's a very gentle pink so it's okay and then you can do this on the other side as well or just leave it like that it's up to you and we need to give him a little tail and for this you uh, dig into the last bit of wool take a pinch so you will have some wool left and you can just scrunch this up into or roll it up into a little ball whichever way you're not felting this um, separately but all you're doing is you're holding this onto the side of the bunny like you did this with um, with a head and you're just stabbing into the edge of that little fluff ball now this is obviously a lot softer but it it, um, it 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 works really well with the bunny so it doesn't look like it's a solid shape it's a really soft fluffy shape you can give him a pink tail why not and then the only thing you need to do is you need to squish him down a bit so that he can actually sit comfortably on his tummy because at the moment he's very round so give it a bit of a squish you might even be able to just felt it felt it down a little bit you just need to work on this a little bit to make him um, sit on his tummy rather than um, bobbing around like um, yeah there we go okay so that's the little bunny done here we go number two whoops number one number two two happy bunnies um, and you can make lots of those you you can also just buy the wool balls and um, m um, use this tutorial to make your own version now this is um, this is part one and if you stay tuned in you will see part two I'm just gonna have a quick check who's um, here watching and who is um, who is with us um, who's joined us oh we've got Patricia has joined us um, Katie's talking about craft for crafters yes of course we're heading there uh, tomorrow in fact but uh, don't come tomorrow we're only setting up tomorrow come on Thursday Friday and Saturday we do have some workshops place spaces open still um, on our website but we are going to take these down tomorrow morning because um, you can then book them at um, the desk at our stand oh, I've forgotten the stand number but I, th uh, I think it might have also have changed because um, we've just been given a bigger stand as well um, so anyway um, oh. oh okay oh I'm just reading some of the comments um, okay right sorry I'm just reading some of the comments which which are not relevant to the project but anyway um, t people talking about the bunnies that they had um, which is lovely and I, I want to hear all about it but I, I need to move on to the next project so um, stay tuned I'm gonna go silent for a minute but do stay tuned um, I'm not going away even though I will just temporarily quickly show the end card but just stay there and I will be back okay see you very 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 shortly don't go don't go